Welcome to this YSL video tutorial. In this session we're going to teach you all about grouping and totaling or aggregating queries in Microsoft SQL Server. What we'll cover in this session to begin with is a look at the basic aggregate functions. We'll explain what aggregate functions are and how they differ from the normal functions. We'll introduce you then to the five most commonly used aggregate functions and we'll also take a, take a moment to teach you about how to use data types properly with the aggregate functions. When we cover that we'll move on to show you how to to use aggregate functions and group data at the same time. So we'll introduce you to the group by clause, show you how you can add grand totals to a grouped query, we'll explain how to use criteria based on aggregated data, whether to use the where clause or the having clause, and finally we'll show you how you can group by more than one column at a time. So let's get started. The job of the aggregate functions in SQL Server is to change a range of numbers such as this list of film running time in minutes into a single data point. So as a simple first example, instead of showing each individual film run time in minutes, we can calculate the sum of the film running time in minutes, which is basically the total. If I give it a simple alias and then execute the query, what we'll see is these 261 rows change into a single row. There are five main basic aggregate functions that you'll probably want to get a handle on in SQL Server. So as you've already seen, the sum function calculates the total of a range of numbers. There's also the AVG function, which will give us the, hopefully, obviously, average. If I can spell my aliases properly, this will go a lot quicker. So there we go, the average runtime. There's also max, which gives us the highest. In a range of numbers. Hopefully for obvious reasons then there's a min function which does the opposite of that. So the min of film runtime minutes. I'm going to avoid putting my aliases in. There we go. The, uh, the minimum, the lowest number in that range. And finally there's, there's one called count which simply tells you how many there are. Now ordinarily you, you count the, the asterisk field or perhaps an index primary key which, which is supposedly the, the most efficient way to use the count function. Count simply tells me how many items there are. So those are the five main basic aggregate functions. Just as with many other calculations that you'll perform in SQL Server, when you're working with the aggregate functions you'll want to make sure that you're working with the correct data types. So as a short example here I've got a list of the film's box office takings in dollars at reasonably large numbers. If I try to aggregate those numbers by summing them and try to calculate the total, I'm going to find that I end up with an error message if I execute the query. I get the arithmetic overflow error. The problem is that the film box office dollars field has the data type of int. And when I add all those numbers together, the, 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 the total is larger than the capacity of the int data type. So what I need to do is convert or cast the film box office dollars field into a different data type first. I can use that using I can do that using either the cast or convert functions. I'll use the convert function for this particular example. I'll convert into big int the film box office dollars takings and execute the query and I can finally calculate the total. That's a fairly obvious example when you get an error message when you try to aggregate data. But sometimes you'll you'll end up with uh with examples that aren't quite so obvious. If I try to take the average of let's pick a smaller uh, a smaller range of numbers, the film and runtime in minutes. If I take the average of this uh, of this uh, field, I'll find the value 126. But that's not actually the true value, the true average of those numbers. Because the film runtime minutes is stored as an int, then the answer I'm going to get here is an int as well. What I'd really like to see, if I use the convert function again, if I convert the film runtime in minutes into a decimal first and then execute the query, I'll see a much more accurate reflection of the average. So there's two small examples there uh, that, that, that suggest you should be using the correct data type when you're using the aggregate functions, just like every other calculation in SQL Server. Another useful feature of the aggregate functions is that you can calculate the, the totals, the aggregates, for different groups of data within your result set. So here I'm looking at the list of films with their country names 
uh, the I, I, the country that, in which they were filmed, and their running time in minutes. What I'd really like to see is the average running time for each individual country. So at this point, if I add in the AVG function around the film runtime in minutes field, I'm not going to bother uh, converting the data type in this example. But if I execute the query at this stage, I'm going to run into a problem. The problem is with the country name field. It's an invalid object, as the, the message suggests, uh, as it tells us at this point, because I haven't told the query to group by the country name. So that's where what the group by clause comes into play. If you're using the aggregate functions in a select list, any other field that isn't aggregated must be included in the group by clause. So what I need to do is say group by country name in the group by clause, and when I execute the query now, I can see my data grouped by country. As well as showing the aggregate information for groups of data within your result set, so here I've simply added in a few extra aggregate functions. So for each individual country I'm seeing the average running time, total, longest and shortest. Sometimes it's also useful to be able to see the grand total for all of the data in the result set. So one straightforward way to do this is to add to the end of the group by clause the width rollup. If I execute the query now, I'll see that I get an extra row in the result set, calculating the average running time for the entire set of films, the total for the entire set of films, and so on. If you're unhappy with the word null in the, uh, in the country name column, a relatively straightforward way to modify that is to use the isNull function in the select list. So isNull country name, I can simply replace that with the word total. If I execute the query now, I get a fairly obvious total row. You can use criteria in a group and total query just in the same way, you, same way you'd ordinarily add criteria, using the WHERE clause. And as long as you're using the WHERE clause to, uh, to add criteria to a non-aggregated field, this works perfectly happily. So if I add in, for instance, a WHERE clause just out of FROM, which says, let's see, Let's look for all the countries whose name begins with the letter U. As a simple example, so where the country name, like U, with a percent symbol, as a wildcard. If I execute the query now, I'll find that I only get the countries whose names begins with the letter U. Perfect. Now, sometimes you'll want to perform or, uh, or use criteria on a field that you've already aggregated. So, for example, perhaps I'd like to show the, this set of results, but only for countries whose shortest running time is greater than or equal to 100 minutes. So, just to show you why, why you wouldn't use this or try to do this in the WHERE clause, if I tried to use the, the min function and add in a WHERE clause where the, f where the minimum of the film running time in minutes is greater than or equal to 100. It all looks fairly sensible, that there doesn't appear to be anything wrong with it. But if I execute the query, I'll be told that I'm not allowed to use an aggregate function in the WHERE clause. So I'm a bit scuppered. Fortunately, there's a clue uh, in there that I can use this, the, the, where, the aggregate function in the HAVING clause instead. So what I'm going to do, if I just remove the results panel just for the moment by pressing Control and R, and then if I add in the HAVING clause, this is the uh, the order you always have to use your, your, your write your select statements in this particular order. So select from where group by having order by. I can now move this criteria into the having clause instead. Eliminate the where clause, and now when I execute the query, that's the set of results that I'll get. One thing to be quite careful of when using the having clause is that your if you're using the, the, the roll-up data, the grand totals, you may well find that those aren't any longer accurate. If I can quickly show you what I mean by that, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to add in another having clause that's going to look for films having an average, or oh, sorry, look for countries having an average running time in minutes of greater than 125 minutes. If I execute this query now, I'll see that I get this fairly short list of countries, four countries in my grand total. However, can you see that the total running time in minutes is significantly longer than the sum of the remaining films or the remaining, the remaining countries? 
the issue with, with this is that the, the roll-up data, the aggregate, total aggregated data is calculated before the having clause filters out the non-matching records. So the countries have been filtered out after the grand totals have been calculated. So that's just one thing to be quite careful of when using the having clause. It's possible to group by and aggregate data over more than one column at a time. So in this example, I've got the country name and director name next to the running time in minutes of each film. So you can see that for certain country combinations, country and director combinations, there's more than one entry. So there's country name, China, director Yimou Zhang, and so on, uh, also on row number three. Then in France, we have Luc Besson having two films. So what I'd like to do is group by country and by director and find the average running time in minutes of my films. So if I add in the average running time in minutes, I'm actually going to add in the, uh, the convert function here as well so I can see the actual true value, just as a quick reminder, convert into a decimal film run time in minutes. Then if I want to see the, the data grouped by uh, country and director, that's all I need to add in to the group by clause. Country name. And then just as you comma separate a list of fields in the select list, you can comma separate a list of column names in the group by clause as well. Director name. If I execute the query now, that's exactly what I'm going to see. So, for Luc Besson, who had two films in the list, he has now just one single row for his French films. Things might become a little bit more obvious further down the list. So, Steven Spielberg, for instance, has the, the largest number of films in this database, and there's his single row of data. If I added in the count of films, perhaps, that'll make things even more obvious. So there we go. The final interesting thing that we can do is just re revisit uh, adding in the grand totals for this group by query. And we can do that, if you remember, by adding the with rollup command to the end of the group by clause. Now, because I've grouped by more than one column in this query, if I execute this now, I'll see not just the grand total for the entire data set, in this case at the top of the, the, the list, but also at the bottom of each country group, I'm seeing a row that calculates the average, average running time and then total number of films for each individual country. Which is kind of neat. I suppose as a final flourish, what we should really do is use the isNull function to change the director's name where it becomes null in that column. We should change this to the word total and perhaps as well for the country name where that becomes null. Exchange it for the word grand. Hopefully when I finally execute this query, you'll see what the point is. At the very top of the list is the grand total for the entire list. And then at the bottom of each country, there's a total row for each country. So that's how to use grouping the group by clause and the aggregate functions in SQL Server. If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wiseowl.co.uk.